Let's learn the process skill of apply constraints. Now before you solve this difficult algebra question from the official practice test, hit that subscribe button to get notified when we post more questions and solutions. Now pause the video as you solve this question. Resume when you're done. Good luck. Let's solve this question. Um, the question statement says if y is not equal to 1, so y is not equal to 1, is x equal to 1? So really this is what we need to find. It is, it's a yes no question. If we get a definitive answer that x is equal to 1 or if we get a definitive answer that x is not equal to 1, that statement will be sufficient. Okay, from the, So that information would be sufficient. All right. So now let's take a look at statement 1. All right, let's uh, see what statement one tells us. X squared plus Y squared is equal to one. Now we need the value of X. So let's uh, re realign this. Um, X squared is equal to one minus Y squared. Now in what scenario will X be equal to one? Let's say if Y is equal to zero, in that case X will be equal x square will be equal to 1 which means that x will be equal to either 1 or minus 1 okay so again you still have two values of x x could be 1 or x could be minus 1 but if y is not equal to 0 then again x could be anything x will not be 1 then x will not be 1 right so Again, we don't know whether we can't say for sure, uh, we, we can't say with surety that x is equal to 1. This means that this statement is not sufficient, which means that in terms of our answer choices, let's go back here, A, B, C, D, and E. A cannot be the correct answer, D cannot be the correct answer. Okay, so now let's take a look at statement 2. Now, statement 2 says that y is equal to 1 minus x now if now in what in, in which case is x going to be 1 let's let's take our cases here if y is equal to 0 then x is definitely equal to 1 but if y is not equal to 0 then x is not equal to 1 so again you have uh, we don't know for sure whether um, whether um, x is equal to 1 or not which means that this statement is also not sufficient which means that in terms of our correct answer we know for sure that b cannot be the correct answer so now we have to look at statements 1 and 2 together so processing statements one and two together, um, we can actually solve for x. So let's do that. So see, you have you have y in terms of x, and then you have um, you have uh, x. You have an, you have a quadratic equation in in x and y. So let's substitute y over here. Okay. So let's do that. So what do we get? X square plus one minus x square is equal to one. Let's solve this further. X square. Let's open up the square here. Uh, plus 1 minus 2x is equal to 1. What do we get? We get 2x squared minus 2x is equal to 0. Let's take 2x common. x minus 1 is equal to 0. So here what do we get? We get x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 1, which again means that we have two possible values. So these two statements are also together are also not sufficient, Okay, which means that the correct answer here is choice e okay now wait, wait a minute before we solve before we mark this choice as the correct answer let's take a look at whether we are missing something now remember what do we have here we have in the question statement that y is not equal to one now we have not used that constraint anywhere in our processing over here okay over here in this processing we have not utilized that constraint at all now let's see what is the impact of that now see y is not equal to one right so let's let's take up the scenario x is equal to zero if x is equal to zero what does that mean in terms of y this means y is equal to one remember because if we apply this part over here y is equal to one minus x if x is equal to zero y is one which is not possible according to the constraint if we were to apply the constraint we know because of the constraint because y is not equal to 1 which means that the only possible value of x is x is equal to 1 which means that this statement statements 1 and 2 are indeed sufficient statement 1 and 2 are sufficient okay 
and let me just cross this out as well okay now again i want you to observe this very carefully over here we have this constraint which y is not equal to one and it's very important to to utilize all the constraints that are given to you in the question statement in the question statement as well as in based on your conceptual understanding so the constraints from both these sources need to be utilized in the solution that you uh, in your solution okay now in this case we failed to when we first did the solution we and, and we arrived at the fact that the x x could be zero or one we did not apply that constraint and that's why we would have selected incorrect answer choice okay um e is not the correct answer choice the correct answer is choice c okay so very 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 important to apply the constraints and in order to arrive at the correct answer okay so always check back before you mark your answer always check back is there any information that's there in the question statement that i have any any constraint that i have not applied or any conceptual constraint that i forgot to apply okay now we will apply the skill to a geometry question also, over the next few days, I will be uploading multiple questions to help you build these process skills. So click on the bell icon to get notified as soon as we add these questions.